Hi everyone, um, I have a bit of a different video for you. Um, this is kind of like a bit of a test because I'm setting up for a Patreon and I'm considering doing like content like this, which um, this isn't going to be a reading, but rather um, a quick guide to purchasing tarot decks and specifically leaning towards indie decks. But um, this can of course go for um, I guess mass market decks as well, and uh, I'm gonna go fairly quickly because, yeah, I just get bored quickly. <laughs> uh, and the second part is um, actually let's just jump in. So the first thing I wanted to mention was um, before purchasing purchasing a deck, um, specifically indie decks. So if it's not on Amazon, there's a few things that you're gonna want to look out for. Just because I've gotten scammed, and I've also gotten decks that that weren't what I was expecting in terms of quality and I guess the first thing I would want to mention is just because it's an indie deck and it's priced at anywhere between 40 to 80 dollars it doesn't really mean that the quality of the deck is going to be reflective of that and that's just something you want to keep in mind and um, while shopping to try and not be too impulsive <laughs> um, like you see the images of a deck they're very pretty and there's like an impulse buy and that's kind of where I've messed up in the past. Uh, I'm going to give some examples. Let me just pull one deck real quick. Okay, so I'm not going to bash any creators or anything like that, but this was an example of, I think it was a $40 or $50 deck that I just don't think is worth that price. It comes with this little guidebook, and I mean, it looks nice, this material, but it's very bendy, very small. Uh, n like, this is a nice image here. I, I liked the imagery, but I just don't think it was worth the price. And again, like, that's the reason why I haven't used these. If you've seen any of my readings, I very rarely use these. Because um, they, they're nice. Um, it, it's really an interesting deck, but again, I wouldn't even mention it if I just didn't feel like this was worth it. I think this was like 40 50 even $60 for this. And that's just um, part of the reason why I've become a lot more picky with purchasing my decks, because uh, it feels almost deceitful in a way. Or in, in a sense, it could be my fault too. Um, so just kind of putting that out there. So the standard tarot size is 2.75 inches by 4.75 inches. And that's going to be one of the first things you look for in the description of whatever deck you're purchasing. This is standard tarot. My hands are kind of small, so it's not a good example, but um, you're going to want to look out for that size, at least as a starting point. Um, I believe this is the same thing, standard. Um, this is an oracle card. The size is a little different. Most oracles are going to be slightly bigger. And this isn't to say, like, the whole point of this isn't to say this is the cardstock that you're going to need or whatever. It's just um, an example of each of them, just for your knowing, I guess. Um, but this is an example of a smaller deck. It can be portable. Um, a lot of tarot. Um, Especially mass market decks will offer a smaller uh, miniature version. Um, but this is just one of the examples, because I didn't know that this was the size, because I wasn't checking at that time, and it didn't say it's a mini deck. So just be mindful of n just not what's not on the title, because this one didn't advertise as a mini, or at least I didn't see that. Um, and it's it has its place. It's just to know that we're, what you're getting into, because Again, especially for indie decks, if you you see the price point at you know fifty dollars and you assume that it's regular size and it's not always the case, but there is a place for these kinds of decks. Um, and then one of the larger decks that I have, like these are enormous. I could hardly hold them. Just so you could see the size comparison between standard and look at this. And this will, of course, impact your ability to read how many cards you could actually put on the table for yourself. Um, but also how much of the image you're able to see in the decks it does change with 
you know, larger imagery, so, or larger cards. So that's something you'd want to keep in mind. So that's the card size. Um, you're going to want to check that when you're making your purchase. And I'm going to have an example, a very quick example of me doing some, some sort of online shopping. Uh, it was going to be for a deck for myself for my birthday. I ended up getting one of them, but none of the, none of the ones that were on screen. So I guess you'll see that later. Um, the next thing I'm going to describe is cardstock. Um, and usually this is one of my three rules for purchasing indie decks uh, from a site that I don't really know that well. I mean, Etsy would be... Um, I would use caution with Etsy sometimes because that's where I've gotten some of these uh, lower quality decks that claim to be indie. Um, but the three rules I'd say are, can they describe the cardstock? Can you contact them? And do they show the minor arcana? Um, just because I've been in that situation where I thought I was getting a full deck, and it is a full deck, but it's a pip style deck where they just show like um, three pentacles as the three of pentacles rather than an image. Let me see if sorry, let me see if I can get an example for you real quick. Okay, so this would be an example. of a pip style. It has eight pentacles, and there's a little more detail, a little more embellishment, if you will. And this is also an example of a card deck that has a foil. So if they say there's a gold foil or something like that, um, this is what it, it's like a reflective finish. And usually these are considered more luxurious and will be charged <laughs> Um, accordingly, but not always. Um, another example. This is considered a pip style deck. And so that's why I'd say, you know, if the minor or the major arcana look really interesting, um, just make sure that this is the sort of deck that you're going to want to actually use for a reading. Um, seeing eight wands, and some could argue that that's actually a more intuitive way of reading, and um, yeah, that's that can be true for some of you, but just so that you know what you're getting and that it's fair <laughs> for you. Um, so cardstock, we have a few different types. I don't have a lot of different variety, but I guess the two main ones that I tend to purchase are either matte finish or a reflective finish. Um, but whatever it is that you choose, um, that's just another way again to make sure that whatever you're buying from um, they actually know the deck that you're, they're selling because um, if they don't have this description it's kind of like a yellow flag not a red flag but a yellow one <laughs> um, sorry so matt uh, the biggest thing with matte finish is that it doesn't have a reflection so if you're recording um, there's not too much of a gloss. This is a reflective one. I guess the lighting conditions now aren't the best, but you could see kind of like, I think that's my fan. So you could see the fan or that might be the camera. And so just one thing to keep in mind. I think at night it's more noticeable with the reflective versus matte where um, sometimes they'll say matte, uh, like luxurious matte or what do they say? Like velvet, velvety touch or something like that. That would be a mat, but where there's almost like a pillowy softness to the touch, right? So this would be more of a luxurious mat. I mean, you can't really see it, but there's, it's, it's got, I don't want to say texture, but a fluff to it almost. And here's, here's what I'll show you. The difference in size. Well, this one's not that different, but. If I hold it this way, and these are the same um, standard card, actually, yeah, these are the same standard cardstock, but um, the finish changes it. It makes it quite a bit thicker. And so shuffling something that is like a luxurious mat, just it takes up more space in the hand. That might be something that uh, you just might want to take note of. 
Also, another thing is the gilding. So some decks are gilded, which means um, they'll either color this on the side or they'll have like a reflective guild, gilded deck. So this would be a reflective or even holographic guild where it's shiny. Uh, it's a selling point. Honestly, I've never chosen a deck because of its gilding. It just happened to be that way. But um, if that's something you're looking for and it helps with your readings or it helps you tune in a bit more, then it's definitely worth it. Um, an example of non-gilded would be just this. It's just a card. It doesn't, again, necessarily mean that the cards are of lower quality. It's just a, stylic, a stylistic choice. I will say that if it's not gilded, um, you don't really notice any marks on these. Uh, but with gilded decks, specifically holographic gilding, I don't know if you could see that, but it kind of peels away after a while, and that's normal. That's to be expected. This one has it more because I do it from one side. Um, there is also matte, matte gilding. So it has the same texture as the cards, or at least in this case, the, the cards. And you'll notice that with matte gilding, um, it doesn't peel off quite as much, and so that might be something you'd want to consider. I have a couple examples um, up on the shelves, but um, again, just a point. If you don't want that that to peel as much, I find that these don't do that, and it adds a nice dimension, I guess. You could also do these yourself. I don't do that, but um, there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube where you can actually do uh, painting or create your own gilding and trimming. And yeah, um, oh, the other thing is the GSM, which is uh, the thickness of the cards themselves. I'd say that a good GSM would be 350, um, and it just refers to like the thickness of each individual card. I don't know what this is, but I'm pretty sure it's not 350 GSM. Um, and that again just goes to how you shuffle, how rough you are with the cards um, to prevent bending or things like that. So. Um, yeah, I think that's all for this portion. Again, I'd make sure that when you're looking that you're able to see the minors. This is like a major arcana, and this is a minor. Major, major, and then minor. And just so that the amount of detail that you're getting with each card uh, feels worth it in terms of value, especially when you start buying more of these decks they can get pricey over time um just for i guess your reference this deck cost i think it was 40 dollars this one was 50. these were both similar matte finish this one just has the gilding this is more of a pip-ish deck, but there's still illustrations on there. This deck was, I think, $30. Um, it's an Oracle deck. I tend to buy Oracle decks off Amazon. Um, I just don't want to pay uh, the same price that I would for a tarot deck, because there's less cards. and <laughs> um, I think Amazon has excellent quality of... Uh, I think my favorite brand of oracles would be, uh, I think it's Blue Angel with Alana Fairchild uh, with a huge guidebook and big pictures, things like that, but this would be kind of that price point. Um, this deck was I think $90, so definitely on the luxurious side there's uh, like holographic but also like hidden imagery within some of these cards, so I'll show you. Uh, there's like a web here. It feels luxurious. Um, this one's also waterproof, or at least water resistant. And so that's something that you might want to ask yourself is like, is it worth the price? Um, I haven't bought a deck in quite a while, except for my birthday, <laughs> but it's been over a year um, just because I noticed that it was becoming a little bit of an addiction. I was just looking for that dopamine rush, and you'll notice it when you watch walkthroughs, card walkthroughs, 
especially for the first time they go wow this is so pretty wow this is so beautiful wow 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 <laughs> i think it's a little more helpful to get uh insight with people who've used the card for a while but that's just me um i think these were 20 25 dollars and that just goes to show that you know you can get beautiful cards uh, for a fraction of the price it just depends what you're looking for at least with Amazon for the most part you know what you're getting like y you know that they can ship it to you it might be a bit of a gamble to go on a, a random website or even on Etsy um, I tend to look at Kickstarter um, nowadays I look only for finished fully funded decks <laughs> and I'll go to their website I'm gonna show all this to you in a second but I'll go to their website through their Etsy or excuse me through their Kickstarter and that's how I find a lot of new decks or I'll just type things in some people do my top 10 favorite decks um, I don't have Instagram so I don't really know I haven't found my decks on Instagram um, it's usually just a bit random or like I'm typing something in it's like I like pirates where are the pirate decks and then, <laughs> uh, I'll find that or dragon themed um, and then I'll narrow the search based off of um, do I want something that's reflective, or do I want something with gilding, which, again, never, but a thing to note about what tends to be the case with reflective decks is that they shuffle a lot easier, they tend to glide, um, so you can argue that that's kind of worth getting this sort of reflective finish, um, as opposed to sometimes matte, matte finish decks are a bit more difficult to shuffle. You'll notice that I'm not doing riffle shuffling either. I just don't do it that way. Um, but you'll see that there's a lot of this. Gets a bit stuck. And that's not to say anything bad about this deck, because uh, I enjoy my decks, but this one can be a bit more difficult to shuffle. And um, all of this stuff adds up to the flow of your reading. And if you're spending a lot of time kind of fiddling here it could end up being frustrating i know it doesn't seem like a big deal but when you do a lot of these a lot of readings over time it's like the pebble of, in your shoe you know um where it becomes a bit irritating i think i've covered everything that i wanted to with this portion with the examples um so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and show you uh how i browse the internet for some new cards and again some of the things to look out for so I think this is recording. So we're just gonna go ahead and browse uh, for tarot decks, I guess, kind of the way that I would and things that I would look out for. So I know that I'm getting the deck that I want to get and that I'm not getting scammed, which has happened a few times. So we're on Kickstarter first. I just typed in tarot and then here we are with tarot decks. Um, these are for backing decks that are not finished yet or they haven't been produced. They're not on the market, and so um, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that you will receive a deck, although, I mean, you're supposed to. Um, uh, I've only backed one deck, and I haven't gotten it yet, so I'm probably not going to back another one, <laughs> at least for a while. Um, but I like browsing just to see, um, I guess, upcoming decks or themes that I might like. Um, so we'll just kind of look at what that looks like with, I don't know. Which one do you want to see? So you have the title up here, uh, subheading information. And what I usually do is look straight away for, um, well, I guess in this case, it does let us know that it's an AI deck, which is something I think um, you should know and information that should be available to you. Um, not something hidden, which does happen sometimes. I think more on Etsy than anything else. But at least here we get the the cups, the minor arcana, a major or minors again. I like seeing the minors um, just to prevent um, accidentally getting a pip deck or yeah, anything like that. Or even if it's just a majors only deck, which I've gotten before by accident. Um. Magic story, blah blah. I was looking for the description, which I'm not seeing. Uh, Elder Truth, blah blah blah. It's usually not this hard to find, so maybe we'll do another example. 
And in this case, I would just pass. Um, only because I don't know what the... I think this should be easy to, to see. Although you can get a sense of the, um, the tarot, the stock of the cards through the video, but this is usually something that's easier to find. So let me see if I can get an example. But um, I guess the things that I'm looking for is, do I see the miners? Um, what, can they describe this card stock? And um, can I contact them? Which you should be able to on, on uh, Kickstarter. But let's take a look at this. We have the, I'm wondering. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's just the what I'm used to browsing, but I, they usually just have this information on their card stock readily available, like very just easy to see. Oh, there we go. The risks. Uh, and it's not to be pretentious or anything like that. It's just, do they know, or do I know what I'm getting um, with the v UV protective coating, long lasting? I think that means it's reflective as well. And just so you know, um, and are there any miners on here? I'm not seeing any. So I, that's something I would look for is, I mean, I think that's a minor card, but um, okay, I don't know what's happening. Okay, but what I'll do usually is I'll look for funded projects so that I could just buy it directly, and that way I know I'm getting a deck. So this looks interesting. Now just for an example, this Legends of Zelda deck by Shannon. So we could find their websites. Log features of the knights, queens, They'll usually have, again, um, these specs, matte varnish, okay. So just so you know what you're getting. And are these, are these the backs? Yeah, the backs. Miners, that's the first thing I look for. Five of Wands, this is a Five of Wands? Two of Vessels? That's confusing, because <laughs> there's one, or am I just not... Okay. But you see, that's why I like looking at miners. Two of wands, too. Okay. I guess that's, what is this, 10? Even though there's not 10, I don't know. But it's nice to see that, so you don't get lured in by, let's say, a theme, or even just the card stock that I'm looking through the cards to see if I could actually read with them, or if it's something that I would want to read with. And of course, everyone has their personal preference. But we saw um, the card stock, we saw the miners, and we can contact them. And those are the three basic things that we're looking for. I think this is enough of this, but um, if I wanted to buy it, if I wanted to buy one of these decks, you can usually, they, they have a link to their website for the most part, a pledge, but you can't pledge for these. Um, so if you can't find them, then I would um, like Google search this specific deck and see where you can purchase it, uh, file it, magician, blah, 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 details, I'm just showing you kind of how I'd go about buying them, but enough of that, I'm over it, let's go to Etsy, so Etsy, I just typed in Terra, and I'm looking for the same things, uh, the miners, the cardstock, and am I able to contact them, um, but the thing is, not all of these decks are real, uh, there are fake decks, and by fake I mean like the, they they like copy uh, the imagery of an authentic deck and then kind of paste it to um, generic paper, and really they're just making money off of a deck they didn't create. I can tell you now that this is not this is a fake. Um, this is fake. I only know that because I happen to know this that that purple deck, this one right here. I own this deck, and it doesn't have a reflective finish. It's actually matte, and it doesn't have curved edges. So I just know the deck, and I know that these are all fake. Um, and I knew that straight away, just because, and that's why I'm looking for 
um, the description because if it's not meant to be you know reflective or it just looks like a cheap cardstock or whatever um, sometimes that's intentional uh, and you find those you know online but um, a lot of times that's actually not the the real deck <laughs> and you're paying full price like that price of well I guess they have a price drop here but um, yeah that's not that's not the actual deck <laughs> And I guess let's look for other red flags within this. Uh, it comes with this pouch. I usually like a box. Just personal preference, though. Handmade item details. Usually here you'll find... and You have to press this to get more of that information, but... Limited edition... Blah, 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 blah. So it does say 78 cards. Download the guidebook, but notice that there isn't a description of the card stock. And that's kind of another flag i guess item details it says what does this say premium paper tarot cards quality but these are just generic words they don't really mean anything without um the specs you know uv coated matte this that the kind of the examples you've been going over so this is a red flag um so no i wouldn't purchase this even if i like the cards on there another thing let's see um, they do show, I guess, the miners, but four different decks. Yeah, but it's kind of like a ripoff. <laughs> it's created from it. I don't know. The word choice. Um, but if you look at their photos, the reviews from the photos, or photo reviews, whatever this is saying. Jeez. Um, I'm not seeing any cards. So that's kind of a red flag, too. Like, what kind of shop is this? Um... And usually when it has like the percent off, um, they do sales, people do sales, but um, these tend to be um, counterfeit decks. Not always, though. Uh, let's look at this one. Uh, indie, Unique, Oracle, Cards, and we do see already the Miners, Ten of Cups there. Um, they have their own site here. Let's see, hand, handmade, blah, blah, linen pouch, cold. So they do let us know that it's AI, uh, which might be something you'd want to know. I mean, you should know of what you're purchasing. Um, we get the material, like a good sense of, I guess it's gilded or whatever. I think it's, here we go. Let me see, but... It actually describes the cardstock as opposed to just premium. It's saying 400 GSM, and that's enough, I think. Um, guidebook. So if you're interested in an AI deck and you like the artwork, this would be... I'd probably go ahead and purchase this just because I know the cardstock and I could contact them. Um, and then we do see the images from the reviews, which... Uh, I mean, I don't read them. I just look at the pictures. Um, artwork, however, so so quality. Oh, maybe I guess I do read them. But this is a big one. I realized that the artwork is AI generated, but it should be specified and quality controlled. Um, <laughs> some horses have five limbs. Uh oh. The computers don't know what they're. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if you you like AI or whatever, that's fine. Um, it's just something that should be very clear. It should be up front. You're not trying to hide that it's AI because that's, for me, that's very sketchy. I don't like that. Um, especially paying like $70 for an AI generated deck. Um, no, thanks. I don't think so. Um, well, given another example, but um, Primordial Tarot, blah, blah. They have the minors and majors, no words or anything like that. A very quick browse, really. I like for item details, more about this item. Two part. Okay. So we get again the specs. This is not like generic wording. Three hundred five GSM, high quality. Okay, fine. Linen finish, black edges. So you know what what it's gonna be. No words. This is an AI deck. Um, other something for it. It's not really put out there, though. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, that like, 
if you 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 don't want to purchase an AI deck, you'd probably have to like go on Finder or something, AI generated or whatever. You could do that, and then look for that because that's not always specified. In case you're wondering. Um, but yeah, otherwise, it does have a description of the cards if you like the imagery, and you can always message them way down here. Yeah. I think that's enough of Etsy, but you get the idea, right? Those things to look for just to avoid getting a deck you don't want or uh, getting scammed with a fake deck. So let's continue. I'm just going to give a couple other examples. Uh, Tempest Tarot. They have their website details this is actually by the creator so Terra by Maisie um, you can ask them anything which is nice about if you're interested in that and they, sh they actually show the miners which is nice so you know that you're getting the pip style decks or whatever it is but I don't really see a description of the cards which is interesting um, a few details When I see these uh, PayPal or ShopPay, I'm generally more confident in the purchase too. Not necessarily that I like the deck or anything, but at least that I know it's a legitimate <laughs> um, deck purchase. You know, you get a sense of what the cards look like. There's reviews with pictures, which is nice. Um, but I also wanted to show an example that sometimes you can get them directly from the their website, or they do have their own Etsy. And again, you know, this is them, Terra by Maisie, you can contact them. They happen to have a discount here, but I think it's because there's shipping involved. So always check for sh shipping. <laughs> you don't want to end up paying like half the price of the tarot deck in shipping. Um, unless you want to, I don't know. Uh, but just something to keep in mind. They do show the card stock, 835, I don't know what that is. Um, and it doesn't say whether or not it's UV coded or anything like that, so... That'd be, I guess, a yellow flag for me, <laughs> where I just don't know exactly what I'm getting. And I like knowing, because um, these are investments, I guess. Para, pirate, parrot. Oh, my God. And I usually set a timer, so I don't end up wasting my day doing this. Um, but you get the idea. Like, th this, again, this laminate is kind of a red flag in case you're just browsing... Um, this sort of imagery, I don't know, for some reason I kind of feel like these are AI, so, um, which again is fine if you want that, but is not if that's not something you're expecting to get. Um, okay, but we already did Etsy, you get the idea there. Uh, Etsy, let's just check this site out. So this is a different site. I believe this is the creator of the deck, I just happen to know it, but if you didn't know, what would you look for, I guess? Uh, first thing is contact. Can you contact them? Um, okay, what? Who? What is this? Stop. <laughs> but it does show, you know, ten of swords. You know what? I wouldn't get a deck just because this is pissing me off. I don't appreciate that. <laughs> but that's just me. I mean, at least you could cont contact them again. Um, I don't really see the uh, about. I guess uh, about. This person, that's great. Let's see all the cards. Oh, beautiful. They don't describe the deck here. I think just because I know it, it's fine, but generally I like just getting a description of it. And I can't even look at this. I can't even come on. What is okay, done. <laughs> Um, but I'm hoping this guide was at least a little helpful in the way that I browse, uh, what I'm looking for, just so I make sure I'm not getting, again, ripped off. Uh, I guess we'll do, this one has percent off, uh, by space Terra deck. It doesn't have a, a name, I guess this is the called, the title, I should say, but, um, we do have imagery here, gold foil, easy to read. Blah, blah matte finish so it does have a description on here so like if you weren't sure about making a purchase and you like the art this is something you'd probably be okay with getting with confidence that it's not 
you know, uh, 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 counterfeit. Perfect. That's a lot of this. Actually, check reviews so you can see what the cards look like. Mm, yeah. I mean, pretty straightforward stuff. But again, the descriptions of the cards really help um, me feel confident with purchasing. There we go, add to cart, whatever. You should be able to contact them, go to their store, browse other things if they've done other decks or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm just going to end it there. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, if you want me to dive deeper into the way I purchase decks, I'm um, more than happy to do so. Um... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm done. <laughs> uh, if you enjoyed this, please let me know. Please feel free to comment, like, subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next reading.